Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to Dell EMC OM and M Tech Talk. Uh, today's presentation is going to be a quick, um, a quick session on how to load MIBs. Before we get started, um, question I guess would be is why would you want to load MIBs? Now, there are several reasons. Um, in some cases, you may have a driver that it doesn't have full support uh, within the application. Um, a lot of drivers um, support an SNMP and CLI model. You can also discover devices that with just SNMP, if for example, it doesn't have an associated driver or, um, or if it has an associated driver and maybe the specific model is not supported. So you can discover that device as an SNMP only device. Um, and so we will basically go through the standard discovery process of getting everything we can through standard RFC 1213 MIBs, bridge MIBs and those kind of things. Um, um, but you may be limited on what else can be collected just because um, sometimes the driver requires enterprise type MIBs, which you would not have if you don't have a full, a full driver support. So um, that's one reason maybe to, to, to load some MIBs so you have access to that data through SNMP. Um, what that will provide is the ability, for example, if you want to do performance monitoring on specific MIBs um, that are enterprise specific or, or other MIBs that, um, that may not be in the system. So let's just walk through some examples here of how to load MIBs so that you can bring those into the system. There's a couple of ways to do this here. And, and uh, let me just pick a device here randomly. Um, you can right-click a device, say it's after, after you discover it, and you can go to um, Direct Access MIB Browser. Now, if you've, if you've discovered it with SNMP, you'll have this option. And you can go to the MIB Browser and, um, and pull that MIB in. Let me try that one more time here. Might be a little slow on this device. There we go. Okay, so um, this is the this is the general MIB screen where you can go, and typically we have all the loaded MIBs already listed in here um, that we load automatically. And so again, when you load a MIB through a driver, when we've created a specific driver for it, for example, a Dell. Um, S series switch or whatever. We pull in all the MIBs that are that are pertinent to that device. And we also do th things like um, um, pull in the trapped. So you'll have those trap voids. We'll recognize those when those come in. And then we also do correlation uh, based on, for example, a link up link down. We set those correlations automatically when you have a known driver. Now, even when you import MIBs through this process, you're only going to get access to the MIB data. You're, we're not going to get the traps and the correlations built in. That's just what you just don't get that with uh, without a real driver. But um, um, in this process here, you may want to load a MIB. And so, um, well, before I do that, let me show you the drop down list here. So there's our standard RFC 1213 MIBs that we have already accessible. There's a variety of other MIBs you can go to by device in here. Um, but if you want to load your own, you simply go to load MIB, select the MIB. And uh, here's one here that's a Fortinet, for example. And uh, maybe I want this MIB and I don't have a driver for it. So I'm going to just select the MIB and import. Now, it's not going to put this in a specific Fortinet category. It's going to put it in a user-defined MIB area. And so you, you may run across something like this where um, um, there's a dependency, and this is typical with importing MIBs. And so you're going to um, uh, you're going to need to find, I would have to go to this Fortinet core MIB. And so and import that first. So we can try that here. Load, select MIB. I don't think I have it here, so I'm not going to be able to, uh, to do that. Let's see if I have another MIB we can try. I did this the other day with some Arrowhive MIBs, but let me just try one here. I don't know what these are exactly offhand. Just try to import one just to give you an example. Typically, there are dependencies that, um, that interfere. Okay, I'm back. Uh, we're back here with the... Uh, we're back here with the uh, MIB loaded. And so you see now this MIB is available in user-defined MIBs. Now I can actually go to this MIB and I can actually interrogate or, or walk the tree of what it is. Now, I've just loaded the MIB. I'm not going to have any access to, um, uh, to the property, uh, uh, the data information until I actually select a device. And this actually is, it actually is attached to this device, looks like at this point. This MIB is not going to make any sense for this device, so I'm not going to get data. But if this device, um, if this was, were the appropriate device for this MIB, you'd be able to go in here and actually see the values and the property for this information. But you'll notice here that now we have this user-defined user MIB area, and uh, you can go, go and interrogate that MIB. Now, that's especially useful. I'll just show you at least one case where you can do this, where you may need this in performance monitoring. 
So if you want to go, I'm sorry, set up a monitor. So you want to create a new monitor. And let's say you want to do the copy the default interface monitor. And so let's just go to that one here. I'm going to search for interface. Let's say I want to copy the default interface monitor. There's already a copy here. Um, so I'm just going to edit this one. <clears throat> but let's say I want to use this MIB in a, in a performance monitor. I can simply go to my my monitor that, I, that I'm using. But you can create your own SNMP monitor, copy a monitor, as long as it's SNMP. But you can go in here and go to this Browse button. And now those OIs will be available <clears throat> under the user-defined area. So uh, where's my user-loaded MIBs? <clears throat> Am I not seeing that? Oh, there it is, right there. So now you see the MIPS here, and I can actually um, um, traverse those those OIs and find the MIPS that I want. You know, it could be anything, and find that OID down to some level. And I just want to say, add this now to my monitor. So this is UPS base, whatever that is. Select it, done. And so now this will be an OID that will be available. See here, it's now available to be monitored. And so it's going to be monitored um, against all these devices. We're going to monitor that OID. Of course, this doesn't make sense in this case because it's an unrelated OID. But that's how that's a case where you would need to load a MIB, for example, to, to monitor specific, um, specific, specific, specific OIDs for a MIB that's not in the system. The other way to load MIBs is in the alarms definitions. If you go to the event definitions, there is a MIB load area that you can do the same thing. Again, you just select the MIB and you know traverse the, the tree here, whatever you want, open it and import it. Now, if I go to my, again, I don't know if that's gonna, that one's gonna actually come through. I'm gonna cancel that, but in, just, you know, you get the point here. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna make me wait for it. So let's wait a minute here. And now it's loaded. Let's just see if we can find that UPS one that we loaded, should be in here. Okay, it looks like the uh, the MIBs aren't actually loaded here. And so one reason is I just noticed here, this is the event definitions. And so um, event definitions, that means traps. And so we do not load the traps, so we're not going to see that here. So the, the place you're going to see that is in the MIB browser. Again, back to your resources. Um, any device now will have access to those MIBs. Um, right. Just picking the one here. And we're going to say direct access to MIB browser. And back in that um, user-defined MIB area. Uh, that's where those are going to be accessible. And uh, you can also, once you select them, you can also unload if you want to. So that's a brief pass on our, um, that's a brief pass on our MIB loading. Let's, let's wrap up this, uh, let's wrap up the session here.